So we're going to derive uh, Fick's Law for Diffusion by analogy to Fourier's Law. And again, this is to find a term, an uh, empirical relationship to put in for the flux. Uh, for this uh, term here, that's the divergence of the flux, or the derivative of the flux. So this is done by analogy. It was done by analogy at the very beginning. So Fourier noticed that if T is constant, there's no heat flow. No net heat flow, okay? And then Fourier noticed, oh, look, if uh, concentration... is constant. There's no mass flow. No net mass flow. Okay. Next thing was noticed. If gradient in T, then you end up with uh, uh, heat energy flow from hot to cold. Okay, so here the same analogy holds that if there are uh, gradient in C, then the, um, the concentration will go from high to low. It will go flow downhill. Okay. Um, continuing on, found that the greater the T difference in two regions um, for the same material, the greater the flow of heat. Okay. So what we have here is that the greater C difference leads to the greater uh, flow of mass. Okay. Lastly, we notice that different materials have different rates. Uh, of this flow. There are things that are very easily uh, uh, allow material to, to flow through them and others that are very strong barriers. And then so uh, Fourier developed what's known as Fourier's law of conduction, which uh, the first law is that the, the, the flow of this heat energy is equal to minus uh, thermal conductivity times uh, the a derivative of temperature with respect to x, whereas where k is the thermal conductivity. And then in that equation, when you um, have the rho heat capacity del temperature del time equals minus um, del by del x of j, in, or q in this instance, you make the substitution in, you end up with del temperature del time equals this this whole term of uh, K over rho Cp, del squared temperature over del x squared, and we define this term as alpha, or the uh, thermal diffusivity. Well, by analogy, let's see what this becomes um, for this other system. We have Ji now, going to be equal to, well, it has to be a downhill slope as well, because concentration goes from high to low. For a positive flux, you need to have the minus there. Uh, Ji equals minus Di del Ci del X. So when you substitute this in to the equation for concentration, Ci over T, you end up with minus, okay, partial by partial X of minus Di del ci del x or you know if d is constant is constant then you end up with del ci del t equals d i del squared ci del x squared so by analogy d 
and alpha have actually the same units even. They both have units of length squared over time. Um, so the mathematics behind solving these equations is exactly the same. The only difference is the types of boundary conditions that are achieved, that you can have here versus here. So here you have boundary conditions of of uh, of flux, thermal conductivity, and temperature. You have uh, no flux, and you have flux matching um, uh, at some position. Uh, for instance, L equals zero, or some other of other quantity. Here we have also the concentration condition, um, but all, we can also have um, other conditions that allows for there to be a jump at a boundary in concentration. So we're going to discuss boundary conditions next, um, but that is the only difference uh, between the general principles of the transport by both of these um, systems that are driven by fixed law for thermal diffusivity or Fourier's law for mass diffusivity.